This is a quick tutorial on how to use OBS to live stream to either Facebook Live or to YouTube. Let me jump right in and show you how to do this. So in OBS, there's a few settings that you want to check when you first get started. I'll go to my preferences and I'm going to start with the stream setting. We'll come back to this in just a moment, but this is where we're going to input our streaming information. Then we go to output and usually my output is a video bitrate setting that I need to tweak based on the platform that I'm using. So YouTube has a support page that actually shares with you the streaming resolution and bit rates that it recommends. In this case, because I'm streaming at 1080p at 30 frames per second, my minimum bit rate should be three megabits per second. My recommended bit rate setting should be 10 megabits per second. And my max bit rate if I'm using AV1 or H.265 is eight. So since I'm using H.264, I'm going to stream at 10 megabits per second. Now, before you set that to 10 megabits per second, you need to double check using speedtest.net to make sure that your internet connection is powerful enough to give you 10 megabits per second upload. And that means that if you're hitting nine, you don't have enough. You need to lower that number. That also means if you're hitting like 12 or 13, you should probably go closer to seven or eight megabits per second. So I've got 238 here. I'm going to be perfectly okay. So that's why I'm going to set my video bit rate to 10 thousand kilobits per second, equating to 10 megabits per second. I'm going to leave my audio bitrate at 160, but of course you want to check your platform specs. So in YouTube, we've got some specs here that they've provided for us. And if you've got 128 kilobits per second, that's what they're going to recommend. So I will jump to 128 just so that we satisfy the recommendations on YouTube. Now there are multiple types of video encoders. I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. You can use a hardware or a software-based encoder. Since I have tons of speed and power on this computer, I'm just going to stick to the default setting that's here right now. Now, one thing that you can also do is if you choose to record within OBS, you can select the recording path of where your file is going to wind up once it's done recording. Additionally, you can choose the quality. In this case, I'm just doing same as stream. And then the recording format, I'm usually doing an MP4 file just to make it easier when I'm sending it to the client. Now I'm gonna head over to my audio tab and it's here that I need to choose where my audio is coming from. So in this case, you can already see my mic is set to the Rodecaster video and that's exactly what I want it to be set to. I'm gonna show you in just a moment another place you can double check that, but it's going to be the same setting. In the video tab, we're making sure that our base resolution, this is just our canvas that we're working with, is 1920 by 1080 because that's the video signal that's coming into the computer and the output should be exactly the same. Our frame rate is set right here at 29.9 seven frames per second because our camera is coming in at 29.97, keeping everything the same. So I'll hit okay and we have an empty canvas to work with. You can see my audio levels are bouncing up and down. That's because the audio was already set to the proper device, but you can double check it by right clicking on this and you can go to properties and then you can change this to Rodecaster, at least in my case, but yours will be whatever is feeding audio into the computer. It might be an ATEM switcher, it might be another device. Then I need to add a source to this scene. So all of this is within this one scene. I'm going to hit the plus sign down here. Video capture device is what I want to add. I'm going to hit O. Okay, and the device we will choose is the Rodecaster video since that's where my video signal is coming into the computer. The Rodecaster video has a USB-C output that's connected to my Mac and that's how it's hitting the computer. And with this preset, I'm going to change it from high to 1920 by 1080 just because that's what we're doing in this live stream. So 1920 by 1080 is the signal coming into it. So I don't wanna change anything from what the signal already is and hit okay. This is our canvas. One thing you may wanna double check when you first get started is if this isn't fully aligned with your canvas, see how I have some extra black space here? You might wanna right click on this video, go to transform, and then within transform, there's a fit to screen option just to make sure that everything is fit on your canvas. In a worst case scenario, for whatever reason, if you had to zoom in, you can make this larger than your canvas, but you'll see these striped images here to show you that it is falling off the canvas and this is not the full image. So I'm just gonna jump back here. We're going to go to transform, fit to screen. I've got my video signal in, I have my audio signal in. Now, all we need to do is make sure that we get our live streaming information into OBS. So how do we do this? Well, if we're going on to Facebook, I'll jump over to my Facebook tab here and I will go to live video. 
make sure that you have admin privileges for the page. You can't just go live on some stranger's page. And then here I have two options. I can either go live immediately or I can create an event in advance. I'm just going to show you for these purposes how to go live immediately. So I'm going to create a test broadcast before going live. We can check that off just since we're testing things. And then I will press go live. Once this page loads, we're going to get some streaming information that we have to enter in over on OBS. So you'll see here I have a streaming key. Do not give this streaming key out to anyone. It will give them the ability to stream to your page and you don't want that unless you want them streaming to your page. So I've got some advanced settings here as well. If I scroll a little further down, I've got a server URL. These are the two things that you need for streaming on any major platform. It's usually going to be a server URL and it's going to be a streaming key. So back here in OBS, I'll go into my preferences again and under the stream settings, I'm going to just go to Facebook Live and you can either connect to Facebook directly from here and it'll just automatically input the server or additionally, if you wanted to do custom, you could just copy and paste in this server URL right into this server window. So for these purposes, I'm just going to do Facebook Live. We'll use the default server and I'm going to copy my stream key and paste it right in here. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now, before you do that, it's just giving you some recommended streaming settings. They do recommend a maximum of 6,000 kilobits per second. That's something that you could change your stream to. But for the most part, I just follow all of the information that's been given to me on the support pages. So with YouTube, I was set to 10. Let's just go over to our output here and we can change this down to six just to satisfy Facebook's needs. We'll double check this saved in here, hit OK. And now you are ready to start pushing this live stream to Facebook. So if I hit start streaming right now, it's going to connect. You'll see a little status bar down here in the bottom section. You can see if there's any dropped frames that will alert you if frames are dropping, probably means that your upload speed is pretty weak. It's also showing me that I'm streaming at roughly six megabits per second. I've been streaming for 17, 18, 19 seconds, and I'm using 5% of my CPU, which is awesome. I'm not using a ton of computing power to make this happen. Additionally, it's just confirming that I've got 29.97 frames per second going out. So from here, we are streaming, but it's not actually visible or live in Facebook. So down here, you can see this is kind of our preview window, if you will, before you take things live. What you're going to need to do is complete this checklist up here. You need to complete the post details and then you can go live. So let's click on that. It's going to highlight this window here. So my live video, I'm going to give it a sample title and a sample description. I'll hit save and you'll notice this completed one of the check boxes. So the last thing I need to do is to go live. In this case, because I told it to give me the opportunity to test before going live, it's just going to say start test. So I can start my test. Live video is starting. It'll take a moment or two and just know that your live stream and what you see on Facebook will be delayed from what's happening in real time by just a few seconds. It might be off anywhere from five seconds up to potentially as much as 30 seconds, just depending on the day. The audio and video should not be out of sync as long as your computer is powerful enough to handle this. But if you are sending everything out in sync, then you are now live and you can see I've got this test broadcast. So it's not going to be publicly visible until I end this and actually take it live for real. So I will end that and then I can rate the broadcast quality. From here, basically we're ready to go live. So if I wanted to do that, I can return home. I will actually go live for real this time, create a test broadcast. No, I do not want to. I will hit go live and we can do the same exact thing. So I will stop my stream over here. It actually stopped automatically since I was changing the settings over here. I'll take my streaming key. We'll go into our settings. This is for real this time. So my stream, gonna paste that stream key in, boom. And you'll see here, it took just a moment to connect. It's starting back up again. And in Facebook right over here, you should see a preview. Once you fill out those post details again, because that was a test the first time around. So test, test for real, we'll hit save and then I can hit go live and that will now go live to my page. Okay, that's how we do it on Facebook. And once you're done, you can hit stop streaming right over here and it will stop the live stream from going to Facebook. And briefly afterwards, you'll see that stop on Facebook. So that is how to go live from OBS to Facebook. Now, if I wanna go live to YouTube, let me hop over to YouTube. I'm in my YouTube studio. I wanna go to the live tab right here and create, and I wanna hit go live. 
You can schedule a stream in advance from here, but if I'm just going live right now on the spot, I'm going to head over to this streaming page. You've got some monetization settings. I'm not going to monetize this right now. So let me just exit out of that. But here is where I get my streaming key information. So right here, default stream key for YouTube. And then I've got my stream key password that I want to use in OBS. Your server URL. So if you use a primary server, let me just jump into the OBS settings. If I was on a custom encoder, right, my server would be this stream URL right here. Paste that in and then my streaming key, which is hidden right here, again, don't send that to other people, would go right here. So that's my streaming information. And then there's a couple settings in YouTube you just want to pay attention to. There are streaming latency options. So if you need it to be a low latency or ultra low latency, because maybe you're asking questions on the stream and you want those questions to come in closer to real time, then you can choose one of those. Just make sure you're on a really good internet connection. I'm just going to go with low latency for right now. Additionally, I'm not going to set much over here. You can choose closed captions if you wanted to. If you were doing that, you have to set it to normal latency. So let me turn that on. Okay, now I've got closed captions. They will automatically generate closed captions for you in English. If you are working with a third party captioning company, talk to them about how to set this up properly so that they can pass along the captioning information. Okay, so I've copied in my streaming URL. In this case, I was just using the default YouTube server and then I've copied in my stream key. Alternatively in OBS I could use the YouTube preset which already uses their primary ingest server and then you can use a stream key and paste in the same exact key. So I'll hit that and hit OK. And if you wanted to, you can like log into YouTube. There's a whole lot more that you can do there. I'm just going to use the custom URL for this one just to show you this is really easy how to use this one. Uh, so I'm going to go to custom. I'm going to copy in my stream URL. I'm going to copy in my stream key and then hit OK. And I am ready to start streaming. So I will hit start streaming and it might take a minute before it hits YouTube, but you'll see it pop up on YouTube's page. It's telling me that I have an excellent connection and now it's loaded my video feed so you can see. And if you're looking over here at the YouTube preview, it's not going to be identical to this window right here in OBS because it's on just a slight delay. But this is just to make sure that everything looks good before you go live. Once you see that video signal over here, you are already live and good to go. Okay, jumping in real quick here, just know that before you start streaming, this is going to go live automatically. So the second I hit start streaming in OBS, it's going to start sending it straight through to YouTube. So the one thing you want to do is make sure that your title in YouTube is correct and you want to make sure that your description is correct. So you can hit that edit button right there to set that up. Additionally, if you scheduled this in advance, you're going to get the option to start the live stream after the fact. So basically you would start sending the feed. It will say, hey, here's a preview window. And then you would click the button to actually go live. It won't automatically go live for you. I hope this was a quick and easy tutorial for you on using OBS and learning how to stream very quick and easy to both YouTube and Facebook Live. I will see you next time.